All right, next we're going to look at the parallel axis theorem. So you thought that integral method was hard for a uniform rod. Now imagine trying it for a circle or even a three-dimensional object. It gets pretty difficult. So we have this really cool tool in our toolkit. We have the parallel axis theorem, which tells us that the moment of inertia about any axis parallel to the center of mass axes, some distance d away, is going to be equal to the center of mass moment of inertia plus the mass times the separation distance of those two parallel axes squared. So the table works really nice if I have my hula hoop and I'm just rolling it down the street. But if instead I want to make a cool little pendulum out of it, oh, that's cool. What do I do with the moment of inertia there? It's not rotating about this point in the middle. It's rotating about a point on its end. So how do we do that? Okay, so first thing you do is we look up what the moment of inertia about the center of mass of my hula hoop is. So the moment of inertia of my center of mass is 1 half m r squared. Okay, so that's the center of mass. Then I just need to add on the mass of the hula hoop. How far is my axis of rotation right here at the end from the center. Well, it's r away. Okay. So my distance is r. Okay. So that means that my moment of inertia about point d is going to be 1 half mr squared plus mr, or 3 halves mr squared will be my moment of inertia about point d. A lot easier than a two-dimensional integral. Now, let's see if this also works for our linear rod. Okay. So looking at my chart, I know that the center of mass, moment of inertia, is equal to 1 12th ml squared. So in order to find the moment of inertia about a third the length, I need to know how far is this point from the center of mass. So we got a third, and we got to add something to get to a 1 half, and so we're going to add a sixth. So d is equal to l over 6. All right. So I get 1 12th ml squared plus the mass times the distance between the two parallel axes, and I get L over 6 squared. Okay, we can factor out some common terms. So I have ml squared times a 12th plus, and here I have 6 squared, so 36, so 136. So a 12th plus a 36, well, a 12th is really 3 36. So I have 3 36 plus 1 36 gives me 4 36. 36 divided by 4 gives me, you got it, 9. And so I'm left with, for a moment of inertia here, 1 9th ml squared. So again, I could have taken that integral, or I could have used the parallel axis theorem. Now, most of you are thinking to yourselves right now, well, I'm going to use a parallel axis theorem every time, Mr. Foster. Well, sometimes on the AP test, and there was an example of this a couple of years back, they said, in using integral methods, derive the moment of inertia about a point. Now, that means you have to do the integral method, but can you always check yourself using the parallel axis theorem? Yes, to make sure you got the right answer. Okay. 